Let us talk about JWT claims. So a JWT claim is basically a payload of the data that is encoded within a JWT. When using a JWT, all you have to send around is basically this specific JWT, like the one we have here. So I actually forgot and copied the bearer word. But if you have a JWT, just like the one we have right here, what you have is basically a piece of encoded information. And only the person who has the private key will be able to get this information now basically what i'm saying is the private key is a jwt secret key so once you have the jwt secret key then you can be able to access that data that's encoded within this specific jwt now the payload of the data that is basically found within this JWT is what we refer to as the JWT claims. So the JWT claims are basically a JSON object that has whatever data that is being transferred or is being stored within that JWT. Now when you go to the right hand side right here, we basically have the headers of the JWT. So the algorithm for basically encrypting the JWT is the H256 and the type of our token is going to be a JWT just like you see right here. We have the payload which are basically the claims and this is where we have the different information about the JWT. Now in this case we see that this is not a fresh token so we have fresh being false and we have the issued at so this is basically when the jwt was created we have the jwt id we also see that the type of this jwt is an access token we see that jwt subject or the user whom the jwt actually refers to so this is the identity of the specific jwt we also have the not valid before so this is basically the time that's for which the jwt is going to be valid and we also have the expiration time of this specific token so these are basically the jwt claims so how can we be able to get the claims from flash jwt extended so what we're going to do is to implement a simple api endpoint that's going to take in a jwt and then specifically just return the jwt claims for that specific token so to do that what we're going to do is to go back to our code and what i'm going to do is to go within our users so let me actually just say auth and what i'll do is to just implement that simple api endpoint so what you're going to do is to just simply say at auth so we are within the auth blueprint which i'll basically call a get method and in this case shall basically call this who am i and what this is going to do is simply return the information of a specific JWT. Now, this may be helpful in case you bas basically want to find out the contents of a JWT and so on. But let's first look at what is contained within our JWT. So we're going to define this as basically who am I, and this function is basically going to return the information that's within our JWT. So let's just pass it for now. So when you pass this for now, all we have to do to get the information within a JWT is to first decorate this so that we access it with a valid JWT. So shall go at the top right here and shall say from flash JWT extended, we're going to import the JWT required decorator. And once we've imported it, we're going to come and decorate our view or our handler function with add so in this case we're going to say at jwt required and then after basically accessing this route we're now going to return the information about a token so for now let's just return so i'll just say return jsonify and what i'll do in this case is to basically go ahead and provide the message so let's get this say message and then shall basically return the information of that specific jwt and in this case let's just say a uh, message just for just just to basically make the endpoint work now hoping that our server is running what we're going to do is to go right to our postman right here and then i'm going to create a new request now this is going to be our who am um, i request and what shall be is a request to localhost 5000 slash auth so we actually call this endpoint slash who am i 
So I think that's what we actually called it. So if we go back right here, it's slash four MA. So I think it's what we have right here. So if we try to get this right now, we shall basically be told that we do not contain a valid token, so we need to provide one. So what I'll do is to go within our authorization and then I'll select that we're going to use bearer token auth and then we shall have to provide our token right here. So have to provide a token. So I'll go where I created the token. I'll copy the token and then I'll basically come and provide it right here and then send the request. So now we shall see we actually have an expired token. So let me just create a new token. So with a new token I have right here, what I'm going to do is to copy the token and then I'll come right here on who am I and then I'll provide that specific token as our new token. So if we send, we're now going to get our response, which is here. Now for us to get the JWT claims, all we have to do is to call a certain function that's provided with Flask JWT extended, and that's going to be our get JWT function. So the get JWT function is the one that's going to allow us to basically be able to access the JWT claims of a specific JWT. Now this is important in case you are interested in finding out some data that is encoded within the specific JWT. So to begin, what we're going to do is to go within our code. So I'll go to VS Code. And what I'll do is to basically go ahead and import our get JWT function. So once I import that, all I have to do is to come right here. So I'll call claims, I'll create a variable called claims, and then I'll set that to whatever I shall get with calling a get JWT function. So this is basically going to return a dictionary that's going to have the payload of the data that's encoded within our JWT. Now if I want to access that, all we have to do is to basically come right here and I'll basically say claims and then I'll provide our claims dictionary right here. So if you go back right here and we try to access this, now, this is going to just return the information that's stored within our token. Now, keep in mind that there are just scenarios in which you may need to use these JWT claims. Just like, let's say you have stored a user ID or a username of a specific of a specific user in your database, you may be able to store their ID and then be able to access it and basically carry out whatever you may want to carry out within your code. Another thing we may do is to try to update our JWTs or add some claims whenever we are creating a JWT. Now we may need to basically do things such as setting administrative JWTs or basically issuing some JWTs to users who are admins and basically providing them some other functionality. Now we also have a specific decorator that can help us to do exactly that. So to do that what we're going to do is to head over to where we define our Hera handler. So we're going to go to main.py and just before we define our error handlers now we're going to go ahead and basically add some additional claims. So those are only going to be added onto our JWTs just in case we are creating that JWT. So this won't be getting the user every time we have to use our JWT, but it will actually add these claims when creating the JWT for that specific user. Now what you want to achieve is when you are creating a JWT for a specific user, let's say the user with an ID of one, then you may want to maybe add some admin privilege to that specific user. So what you're going to do is to say additional claims. And what we're going to do is to call a specific decorator that's still on our JWT object. So we shall say at JWT dot. So in this case, we shall call the additional claims loader and we shall define the handler function. So this is going to be basically the function that's going to be called to add some extra claims to the JWT of that specific user. So we shall basically say make additional claims and this will basically take in the identity of that specific user sorry for that so 
shall basically provide the identity of the user for whom we want to basically add some claims now for us to be able to achieve this sorry for this so for us to be able to basically get that user i'm going to close this i think i've been moving around windows a little bit so uh, for us to be able to get the user for whom we actually want to go ahead and add extra claims what you may do is to use their identity so the identity is basically going to be the jwt subject which is what we have right here which is going to be the username of that specific jwt or the username that we provide as a subject of that jwt so what you may want to do is to basically find out if that user is a certain username and then basically add some claims to the jwt so let's go ahead and do that so what you shall do is to come right here and say if identity so the identity is going to be the username of that specific user now our identity in this case is going to be our gender one two three so if we say let's say uh if our identity is equal to uh gen do one two three then we can go ahead and basically be able to add some administrative claims to our JWT. So what we're going to do is to basically say if the identity is equal to gender, then what we shall have to do is to go ahead and add those claims to our JWT. So to do that, what we're going to say is we are going to return the claims that we basically want to return on that or to basically set the value for the claims that we want to add to that jwt for that specific user so what i'm going to do is to come here and say return and let's say we're going to basically set a key so let's say is staff and then we can say that this user is going to be staff and we also want to catch a situation in which the identity of a jwt is not actually the name gender so to handle that we can basically come right here and then say else we're going to return is staff so we're going to just come here and say his staff and then this is going to be false so if we go ahead and save if we try to recreate jwts for the user gender we shall now see the is staff attribute being set to true. So let's try to do that. Now I'll go back to the route where we created our JWT pair and I'll try to log in a user with the name gender. So I'll do this to send. And this is going to create a fresh JWT. So I'll copy this JWT. And once I've copied it, I'll then go back to our who am I endpoint right here. So I'm going to remove the JWT that we had. And then I'll simply paste in the new JWT. So if we now send, we're going to see that this JWT is now going to have that specific is staff claim added to it. So that can be important in case you want to add things like, let's say, uh, some added security or some access control within a specific JWT. And the beauty is this only works when you are creating the JWT. So you don't have to basically go ahead and query for the user and then check if they are staff or not, which is actually amazing. Now you can ask when this is actually useful. Now you may have a scenario in which you may want a specific endpoint to be used by a specific user. And in this case, since we've defined our user to be staff, we can now go ahead and use our JWT to basically check if our user is staff and then be able to carry out something. Now we created a, uh, an endpoint right here, which is basically the one for getting our users. So let's provide a valid token right here. So if I go ahead and provide our fresh token right here, we'll now be able to access all our users, just like you see right here. What if you wanted this action to only be carried out by admin users or staff users? So that's where actually our claims are going to be important. So what you can do is to go ahead and basically restrict that to 
our users who have the staff attribute being to true now if we go back right here within our users all we have is an endpoint that is protected by jwt required and then it will just basically go ahead to help us access those users so if you want to basically add some access control all we have to do is to just go ahead and basically get the jwt identity so it can come actually we want to get a specific jwt claim so we shall call jwt or get jwt so once we have that we can just come right here and say that our claims are going to be equal to get jwt and we can basically carry out this functionality only and only if the user is a staff user so what you can do is to say if claims and in this case we shall basically call dot get so this will basically return our is staff attribute so we shall say if claims dot is staff it's actually is staff and in this case we want to check if it is true then that's when we only want the user to go ahead and execute this code that is right here so you can just basically call this code only when the stuff user is true and if they are not then all you have to do is to return an error so we shall say return jsonify and in this case we want to basically provide a message and this will be something like this oh let's say you are not authorized to access this so let's say also a 401 status code will be returned so let's say we logged in a user such as john doe or any other user that exists within our application and we try to make them access this specific endpoint so if we go back to our postman right here and we try to basically query our users by using the jwt for the user gender here we see that we can be able to access the users so let's try to get a user such as let's say john doe and try to access their their list of users or let's say we try to access this specific endpoint for which we have added some access control so for us to do that when you go back to creating a jwt pair i'm going to change the name from from gender so let me actually reduce this so that you guys can see so what i'm going to do is to change the username from gender to john doe so just going to come right here and update this to john doe one two three and then i'll provide the password which is still the same password so if i send this we're going to create our jwt right here which i'm going to copy and once i've been able to copy this jwt i am now going to go where we get all our users and then provide that jwt so i'm going to go ahead and provide that jwt right here so that we actually see our access control being implemented so if i come right here and basically remove that jwt and provide our new jwt in this case if we send we're actually seeing that we are not authorized to access this endpoint meaning we cannot access it because the jwt of our staff user is not one that's being used and this is very important as it helps us to authorize certain users to access certain endpoints within our application